Hi everyone, and welcome to today's IT Pro Web Seminar, Today's Requirements for a Hybrid Cloud Strategy, sponsored by Ormoco. If you have any technical difficulties during today's session, please press the Help widget on your player console to receive assistance in solving common issues. And if at any time you are having audio difficulties or issues with advancing of the slides, simply hit your F5 key to refresh your webcast console. Today's web seminar is being recorded and will be available on demand for 12 months starting tomorrow. You will receive an email when it is ready. And with that, let's meet today's speakers. Mike Odie is a Senior Contributing Editor for IT Pro and SQL Server Pro and is President of TECA, a technical writing, content creation, software development, and consulting company in Portland, Oregon. Michael is a former SQL Server Microsoft MVP and covers topics like Data Center, Windows, Windows Server, hardware storage, and hybrid cloud. Jason Krilich is the Director of Worldwide Sales Enablement and Operations at Ormuco and has held other director level roles at companies like Parallel slash Odin and Virtuoso. Jason has been on the forefront of the cloud computing revolution and continues to build relationships that help enable companies to benefit from the cloud by reducing costs and increasing revenues. And with that, the floor is now yours, Mike. Thanks, Jen. Hi, everybody. Today we're going to talk about some of the challenges of moving to the hybrid cloud. You know, there's no doubt that the cloud is one of today's hottest trends in IT today. Many businesses are using cloud technologies, they're using things like Office 365 and other software as a service offerings. In addition, a lot of others are using infrastructure as a service offering to do things like, oh, test and dev, and as well as setting up backup and disaster recovery kind of sites in the cloud. You know, the cloud, there's a lot of reasons for this. It offers a lot of advantages. It provides the ability to lower your capital costs and reduce your operations requirements with its pay-as-you-go kind of pricing model, and there's no need to deal with any hardware issues when you're dealing with the cloud. However, you know, as we all know, most businesses just can't move all of their IT services to the cloud, and there's a variety of reasons for that. And instead, most businesses have adopted a hybrid cloud model where most of their processing is performed on present, and the cloud is leveraged for various specific tasks. In this presentation, we're going to cover some of the challenges of moving to the hybrid cloud, some of the concerns that you have to worry about that you may not have thought of, and then we're going to talk about some of the ways that you might deal with them. Where we're going to start, I'm going to talk about some of the IT trends today. What are some of the things that are driving businesses towards the cloud? Why are they using it? And then exactly what is this hybrid cloud? How does it work? How are businesses using it today? And what are some of the benefits that they expect to get out of the hybrid cloud? Businesses have a lot of expectations as they move towards a cloud environment and look to incorporate the cloud into their their normal IT processing. So what are some of the benefits that they're going to get by moving that way? And then, of course, you can't get that way quite as easily as a lot of companies might think that you should or that they would want to have you believe. There are a lot of challenges in moving to the hybrid cloud, and some of these things you might not expect. So we're going to cover what some of those things are, and then we're going to look at some of the practical hybrid cloud solutions that uh, businesses tend to be using today, and they're using successfully to accomplish various tasks that they need to do. So what are some of the trends that are driving uh, cloud adoption? You're seeing a lot of adoption for software as a service. Things like Office 365 have become very popular, and lots of businesses have adopted that kind of model, moving to a subscription-based software service, but that's not the only one. There's also SaaS and other types of uh, uh, offerings that are provided in the cloud like that and that are def definitely making it easier for businesses to use these kind of applications. And then the hybrid cloud, it's growing. A lot of businesses are taking advantage of its uh, pay-as-you-go compute kind of capabilities, its storage kind of capabilities for things like backup. Some businesses are considering it for disaster recovery. And then one of the other things that's happening with cloud adoption is that a lot of businesses are really into heterogeneous cloud usage these days. They're not just using or picking one single cloud vendor like Azure or Amazon. Instead, they're using both of them and sometimes more for different types of usages and different types of applications and services. And that can make 
uh, dealing with this hybrid cloud model kind of difficult. They all have different cost models. They have different APIs and different application requirements, but it is something that a lot of businesses are doing today. And they're doing this because uh, IT is really consumer-driven nowadays. The cloud and the ubiquitous nature of the Internet has caused IT to really have to up its game in terms of both uh, performance and scalability. When users hit something, they expect it to respond like a Google search, and they also expect 24 by 7 by 365 availability. And it's not just users, it's management as well. So there are a lot of consumer-driven expectations today. And there's also the need to update applications. Many businesses are looking at transforming their legacy monolithic type of applications into something that is more flexible as well as something that is uh, more resilient to failures. And that's where technologies like DevOps and containers are coming into play as businesses are looking to uh, migrate their applications. And then another thing that businesses have begun looking at is using centralized cloud-based management to manage both their cloud resources as well as their local resources, looking at ways to get a single pane of glass over both their cloud usage as well as their on-premise usage. And many times it's cloud-based apps that they're using to do that. When businesses are moving to the hybrid cloud, it does solve a lot of problems, and I'll talk more about the benefits in just a second. But as you can see in this slide from some of the research companies, this is a very popular trend. Gartner says 90% of businesses are planning to use the hybrid cloud solution or solutions by the end of 2017. Well, that's already happened. So you know that a lot of businesses are into hybrid cloud models. Forrester follows up with this, and they're saying that 56% of businesses are currently using a multi-cloud model. So they're splitting their cloud approach between public clouds, as well as hosted clouds and also private clouds that they're building amongst themselves. So this is a pretty popular trend amongst businesses. And 451 Research, another firm, they estimate that 69% of enterprises are going to be in a multi-cloud hybrid IT environment by 2019. So using multiple clouds and integrating the cloud with your local on-premise environment, definitely a popular trend. And Gartner further estimates that by 2020, 90% of organizations will be into using some sort of hybrid cloud infrastructure to manage their different clouds and their on-premise kind of implementations. So what are some of the benefits that businesses are looking at as they move to the cloud and they adopt it for hybrid cloud strategies? Well, the cloud offers you incredible scalability, nearly unlimited scalability, and you don't have to have – it has pay-as-you-go compute and storage so that you don't have to have capital outlay as you try to increase your compute and storage capabilities to accommodate different types of um, projects that you're working on. It also has very high availability where you can get redundant operations and cloud redundancy across different cloud providers' regions. And that can allow you to have things like very fast recovery for any VMs that you're running up there. You can also get reduced capital costs, of course, because you don't have to actually have external hardware purchases in order to use these. And this gives you a lot of flexibility to incorporate new projects. And of course, the cloud does have um, global accessibility. So pretty much anywhere you're in the world, you can access your cloud resources. Many companies are also moving to the cloud or looking to the cloud for increased security in this age of malware and other types of attacks. Uh, sometimes cloud resources and cloud vendors can offer better security than uh, most, many businesses can. However, security is also one of the main concerns for businesses in the cloud, and it's something you definitely have to be concerned about, and it has different sorts of implica implications if you're in the cloud. So some of the expected outcomes that businesses expect, they hope for improved IT management where it's easier management, where you don't have to worry about local resources quite as much, that you have the better flexibility of IT options. There's a lot of uh, projects and things and templates that are pre-built by various cloud vendors that can help you get started with new projects like IoT. And there's also, they hope for better cost management, although this is one of the biggest challenges. And also improved disaster recovery. That is probably one of the biggest strengths of the cloud and the hybrid cloud because it can offer you uh, cloud-based disaster recovery where you don't have to have 
a, a DR site that you would pay for, like a hot DR site, and instead you can recover and do your DR to the cloud type to the cloud targets. And of course, businesses always are looking to have uh, more um, predictable SLAs and to be able to meet them. So. It's not just that easy to get there, though. There are a lot of challenges in moving towards the hybrid cloud. First of all, there's an issue of application compatibility. You can't just always move all your applications off to the cloud and expect them to work. There's a, re there's a number of reasons that I'll dig into in just a minute that can be challenging in this area. And there's also security. I talked a little bit about that just a second ago. Security has different concerns. When you're in the cloud and your business critical data is up there, you have to have uh, different levels of protection that you might have if you're on-premise. When you're on-premise, you're behind a firewall, often behind VLANs, and many times your data isn't that easily access accessible. That is not always the case in the cloud. And predicting cloud costs is also a challenge. A lot of times businesses have real difficulties doing this. Vendors do offer estimators that are out there. Azure has one, AWS has another, but many times you don't actually know what these cloud costs are until you actually move up there, and that's not the greatest time to find out if this is costing a lot more than you think. Then there's the challenge of cloud skills. A lot of companies, they're highly skilled with their on-premise infrastructure, but moving to the cloud, it does have different technologies. There's different ways you manage it. Many companies, as they move to the cloud, look for uh, third-party consulting uh, skills to help get them there and make the transition. And of course, that is also compounded by the fact that they tend to be using multiple heterogeneous clouds with different management kind of uh, infrastructures and options. And then as they move to the cloud, a lot of times one of those driving factors that are bringing people there is the capability of doing new applications, trying to incorporate things like the Internet of Things or artificial intelligence or machine learning. Trying to get these kinds of new technologies going, well, it requires new skills, and it's also things that businesses aren't familiar with, and then they typically need to integrate this with their own applications. And one of the other challenges in moving to a hybrid cloud environment is regulatory requirements. Many companies, especially in Europe, they have data sovereignty issues where they have to stay in control of their data. And also, you want to be aware of vendor lock-in. Many businesses uh, do not want to be locked into a single cloud vendor, and they want to be able to move their resources back and forth should they need to. So with application compatibility, there is a big deal with legacy applications. Many times they have local dependencies that can prevent you from moving them into the cloud easily. And a lot of times with local and monolithic type of applications, they are not written to be service-oriented cloud applications in the first place. That means they are difficult to update. And if there is a failure in one part of the application, it can often take the entire application down. And that's why there's a trend to migrate from these monolithic applications to microservices, which tend to be more flexible and more resilient. But that also tends to require application rewrites, and rewriting enterprise applications is no trivial kind of matter. It takes many companies a long time to do this and a lot of resources. So moving into a hybrid cloud environment with your application is sometimes very difficult. And then there's the matter of ISV applications, things that you've purchased. A lot of times these things are also meant to run on premise. They're not written, meant to run in the cloud. If you start to modify them to run in cloud environments, a lot of times you can run into this issue where you're in a, a vicious rewrite cycle where you have to rewrite the application every time a vendor makes a release to accommodate whatever cloud changes you've made. And then although they're not entirely common these days, there is uh, still some uh, mainframe applications, mini computer applications, Unix applications that are running out there, and these things are completely incompatible with the cloud these days. And to move them over, uh, these often require a complete rewrite. So these are definitely considerations you have to worry about when you're considering a hybrid cloud kind of environment. It's not always that easy to just uh, lift and shift over and get over there. And there's a lot of things that can stop you. Security is also another major concern. 
When you're setting up your security, and especially in a hybrid cloud environment, first you need to make sure that your connection between your on-premise location is, uh, is secured with the cloud. Most companies are using VPNs in order to make uh, these kind of secure connections off to their cloud resources. But that's not all. The cloud also has its own authentication requirements. And as you're running applications up there, you need to have authentication that spans both your on-premise and your cloud infrastructure. Using technologies like uh, Azure AD and other things like that can give you capabilities to where you can get single sign-on between the two and extend your Active Directory or authentication infrastructure from your on-premise into the cloud. And then you're, there's your, the issue of your cloud data. If you are going to start to secure your critical resources into the cloud and bring them up there, you know that there's potential global access into them. That means you're going to need to do things like make sure that data up there is encrypted. And then there's dealing with regulatory and compliance. How do you do with that? How do you deal with data sovereignty? Most cloud vendors do have an option nowadays to where you can uh, get your data stored within uh, whatever uh, local regions that you may need to put it in, but that's not universally the case, and it's definitely something you need to concern yourself about. And then there's also the issue of transferring compliant data. Many times you have data that has to deal with certain regulatory compliance requirements, and you have to move that data from a potentially uh, compliant requirement, like your on-premise infrastructure, into the cloud, you have to make sure if you do that, that that data stays in compliance. SLAs are another issue that can be a challenge as you're moving off to a hybrid cloud environment. When you're moving to the cloud, it can definitely impact your SLAs because the cloud is a shared infrastructure. You may or may not get the performance that you're expecting uh, from your on-premise infrastructure up there. There, is a, there are latency issues involved, and if you're trying to perform performance tracking, for your applications, it can be a complex thing when you're trying to mix cloud and on-premise applications together. Tracking the performance and making sure you're getting your SLAs can be challenging. And then, how do you even know that your cloud vendor is really meeting your SLAs? There can be some questions as to, since they're the ones providing the, the resources, you really need a way to find out if they're actually providing the kinds of uh, services that you're paying for or you expect that you're getting. And then that leads us to the issue of estimating cloud costs. You know, it can be very difficult to estimate your cloud costs, and even though the vendors, the various vendors like Microsoft and Amazon do have tools, um, there are issues of latency, there's issues of getting and mimicking your performance in the cloud. If you move to the cloud, may you might have to buy higher levels of virtual machines or other resources out there than you expect. So there are definitely issues of what is the cost to really mimic my internal performance up there in the cloud. And a lot of times, uh, you don't really know until you've done it. And then with scalability, cloud resources are more or less meant to scale vertically. There are financial incentives to have smaller uh, but more virtual machines, say, up there. They are not really incentivized to scale with large virtual machines because you have to pay more as you get more computing resources up there. And not everything is geared to scale horizontally. For instance, applications, enterprise applications like database applications like SQL Server, they definitely are meant to run in larger, more powerful VMs with access to more memory. So horizontal scaling really isn't an option for everything you might be using. So what are some of the ways that businesses today are successfully using hybrid cloud solutions? Well, Dev and Test is one of them. Uh, with Dev and Test, uh, developers can spin up their own VMs, their own test environments, use them easily, take advantage of new applications like Docker or uh, container orchestration with Kubernetes to quickly make new resources up in the cloud. Backing up to the cloud is another thing that many businesses are doing. A lot of enterprise products like SQL Server have uh, built-in cloud integration. Many third-party backup tools are able to back up to the cloud, so that's a pretty successful strategy. And using the cloud as a DR site has become very popular. Again, applications like SQL Server do have things that are uh, built-in cloud integration with their availability groups where they can 
automatically use the cloud as a DR site, saving you the expense of having a hot DR site, which is a great thing for many smaller and medium-sized businesses. And also centralized cloud management, uh, trying to manage both your local resources and your, um, and your devices and your other uh, cloud resources using a single pane of glass. Uh, these kind of central management systems are uh, beginning to be popular. So, some of our key takeaways, well, the cloud has definitely become a core part of most IT infrastructures nowadays, and many businesses are using hybrid cloud types of environments. And it's best to take advantage of the cloud where it make, makes the most sense, you know. Those kinds of uh, uh, software as a service applications like Office 365, using it for dev and test, using it for backup and DR, using it for external storage, makes a lot of sense to use the cloud for those kind of environments. Um, but it also makes a lot of sense to continue to run on premise where it makes sense to do so. Not all applications can be moved to the cloud in a cost-effective manner. The cloud doesn't always support all of the different kinds of uh, performance that you may expect also out of your applications without paying more than you expect. So there are definitely some considerations as you're looking to move into a hybrid cloud type of environment the end of my part. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Jason. Thank you. So, um, Mike, thank you for, for the overview of kind of the state of the private and public cloud. There's a lot to think about. Um, I appreciate you having us on uh, this call to talk a little bit more about the decisions. And this is all about the decisions you're making today. Uh, there's a lot of things to take in, obviously. Um, in, for many aspects of if you're a decision maker or you're an IT user or a developer, it's important to understand the landscape here. Uh, the landscape really is either you're building a private cloud today uh, and you're experiencing the pain and the challenges and the headcount and the ROI and the deadlines that you're trying to keep, or you're in an environment similar trying to build a public cloud and knowing that not all data that we talk about can live in a public cloud. There's just data that's just too sensitive to even think about going there, whether it's, uh, you know, for example, you mentioned HIPAA compliancy. That's a, that's a good vertical to look into that data. And it, with the customers we talked to today, there's also political reasons why they just don't want that data outside of their own, their own uh, data center. So, with the big three decisions here, you're considering it, you're building it, you're doing it privately or publicly, uh, it's really important to understand your cloud strategy. And everyone uh, out there has a team and they're thinking about how they want to go about doing this. I like to really dr drill down on and keeping it simple. Uh, what data do you really need to run in the cloud? Uh, first and foremost, uh, there's VMs and containers. We talk about Windows environments. We talk about Linux environments. At the end of the day, people want simple. Uh, they want to keep it very isolated. They want to have the flexibility that you mentioned before. And at the end of the day, we have a budget that we set out for and we try to solve. And then at the end of the month or the end of the quarter, something gets out of our control where it becomes a usability issue and we start getting bills that are way above and beyond what we ever thought or imagined they would be. So with Ormuco, uh, we spend our time talking to enterprise customers, learning about their pain points specifically on how do we control this? Uh, how do we help them control this? What projects are they working on? Everything that we take uh, on with a customer is really built around the project that they have uh, in mind that are currently working or thinking about developing or in the middle of building. We really focus on project-based computing. And at the end of the day, in any conversation that we have with our customers, we always have a storage conversation. Uh, the data has to be put somewhere. We have to find a way where our customers come to us with the problems of, we've got challenges. Those challenges are, I want to put this data in a cloud where I'm not going to be constantly uh, nickel and dime for the cost of this storage. And anytime I want to access it, it's absolutely, uh, I got to be careful how I do that because anytime I access it, it could cost me money. So let's think about those questions as we're building our cloud or we're already in the middle of building it and kind of move on to what 
we want to identify with uh, today's market. Uh, traditional IT, of course, we talked about the infrastructure that you have, uh, the teams that you're building, uh, you know, the, the cost of, you know, physical storage uh, today is always built around hardware. Uh, the more storage you add, the more hardware you add. And it's really tied into infrastructure. And the infrastructure you, you have on-prem or the infrastructure that you're, that you're using outside of your environment. So the future of IT as we see unfold in front of us uh, with the hyperscalers, and you know, we'll talk about that, everything seems to be moving towards the past of software defined. And it's pretty obvious that there's been great success in the public clouds with DevOps environments leveraging private or public clouds for their, their compute projects. But as we evolve, that public cloud need can be private. And that's what Ormuco does. We keep the, all the things that you would have in a public cloud and put it in a private environment where we can start talking about the infrastructure that you have in place, the workloads that really need to be identified. Does it need to be in a public cloud? Can it be in a private cloud? And at the end of the day, how does it benefit my organization and my team? And at the end of the day, costs. So we always in the middle of this conversation, we've identified it. Now that we've, um, you know, identified this challenge, we want to really leverage uh, the applications that we have. We spend a lot of time um, with our enterprise customers talking about the legacy applications that they have on-prem. They've built them. They work. They're great. Um, they come to a point where those legacy applications start costing the company more money to manage, and it costs them more to use some of the tools and the, and the virtualization infrastructure in place to manage those applications. Those costs continue to grow. Uh, we can discuss um, how I, we've worked with a number of enterprise companies as we're, you know, we're going to get, I see questions coming in here, and I, I want to get to that soon here before I um, demonstrate the high level of what Ormuco does. We get in a lot, involved in a lot of migration projects um, with legacy applications. And at the end of the day, we want to be able to provide the same look and feel that you would get from a hyperscaler in the market today and not try to reinvent um, a process. We want to make it simple. So I'm going to move on here where here's a good conversation point I'd really like to have. The challenge with traditional IT departments that they're really stuck with saying, you know, for every dollar we spend, 80 cents has to go into supporting what we have today because that's what's in the market. And traditionally, the other 20 cents kind of gets earmarked for innovation. And what Ormuco does is even the scale where you can have the benefits of lowering that 80% to more of a 50-50 split where you, it's really important when we talk to um, especially at the CIO level and other departments, they want to be able to put dollars into innovation because they know for as they move down the road and look at year two and year three, those costs will continue to increase. So they want to place their bets on innovation where those costs will decline over time. And I think that's what brings us to kind of a, a natural talking point uh, about Ormuco and how we approach the market with, um, you know, the five pillars that we put in place to discuss our solution. And, you know, at this point, I'd really like to share my screen here and wait for this to happen. And then, of course, we could take some questions while I'm doing that. In fact, I'll pause for questions while I'm setting this up. Uh, can we dive into that at this moment, or should we... Should we wait till the at, at the end of uh, the presentation here? I'll leave that up to you guys. Jason, we can do one quick question question if you want um, while we're waiting for your yeah. screen share to pop up. So Absolutely. let's go ahead and start with this first question. What is the difference between Ormuco and a, a broker to hyperscalers? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, there's a lot of service providers in the space and a lot of um, noise. Uh, 
marketing dollars that are out there. And the, of course, the most over abused word is cloud. Uh, a broker is a company that will make a connection to you to a hyperscaler uh, to allow that connection for you to share um, your or have an IT need that you can you can pull from a public cloud. Ormuco is not a broker. Ormuco has a complete on-prem solution that gives you the same benefits and the same look and feel as I'm sharing with you guys here um, on my on my desktop here, and hopefully you're able to see it okay. Um, we separate ourselves simply by, we, we don't focus on making connections. We focus on providing a solution. And that solution at the end of the day uh, is going to dramatically reduce your costs of having to deal with a public cloud. In fact, that's what really brings us to the table for a lot of the enterprise companies today. They seek us out primarily because we provide this UI here that I'm sharing and knowing that for every dollar that they're planning on putting in the public cloud, they can save 50 cents per dollar by just working with Ormuco. And, and I'll talk about that. So before I go there, can you see uh, my screen here clearly? Or let's make sure that's working correctly. Yep, that's great. Good. Awesome. So uh, we mentioned a few things here. Let me get a little drink of water there. Um, I know we have some other questions, but I kind of want to talk about um, how we work as a company. We're project-based. Uh, we take everything on based as a project. And what you're seeing here are, are two projects. And I can spend hours going through this uh, demo. <laughs> Obviously, I won't. We've got a lot of content we've covered. But the important thing to understand is that we provide a very simple, single platform. I can sign on with this cloud. Uh, we support multiple languages. I have a single sign-on anywhere in the country, uh, globe for that matter. This database can, or this backplane that you're seeing here can be launched anywhere in the world and provide a single sign-on. That is a big, big deal for companies. So when we talk about software-defined, um, Mike was talking a lot about that earlier, about software-defined uh, environments. And I wanted to spend a little time about how we do that. Uh, when it comes to networks and routers, uh, we can create these in the software-defined world. We don't have to, you don't have to go out and buy additional hardware. And that is a big, big deal. You don't have to you know, earmark another 20 grand for a Cisco router. You can actually a apply it here. So these are just kind of a high level uh, of how we would approach that um, by creating these environments in a software world. Uh, with that, I know that if, can we, let's grab another question there. I think there's another one popping up here. I want to be able to uh, address that here while I'm demoing. Sure. Uh, are you looking at Alexandra's question? I'm I'm in the middle of uh, if you can read it to me that'd be great because I'm in the middle of <laughs> I can't see it behind the background. Yeah, so the newest question that just popped up are what cloud solutions would you recommend for the healthcare industry? Well, that's where we spend a lot of our time. It's a great question. Um, we deal with HIPAA compliance, and the healthcare uh, industry is very very um, data focused on they, that has to be that data has to be on, on prem or MUCO does a great job of that um, I can think of an application here just in Seattle it's um, the name of the application is called epic and it's uh, an in-house cloud solution for patient uh, and doctor communication and where MUCO would step in here is to provide that application on this on this back plane and make it very easy uh, for the IT staff to use internally, and uh, speci um, specifically with Epic, uh, patient records. There's so much data in patient records that have to be archived. And that's where the real cost comes in play with um, the IT of today uh, with healthcare. That's where the data there, just for pure storage, is just that's where the easiest place to go and and work to reduce that bill. That's where our MUCO can help. Um, when we think about that, 
this is an example, if I wanted to in healthcare, I could create a storage pool that's private, it's not public. An example, I've got one here where I can open this and I can load up records and patient files. And, and knowing that, um, that question would be, well, here's where the data is located. And it's very secure. And when I mean very secure, I can go in to my instances or uh, my project here. I'm going to manage it here to show you the level of security that we have. Let's just call this healthcare. And uh, this is our healthcare administrator. And then I can create groups underneath this healthcare environment that provide them um, specific privileges. So, for example, if I just wanted storage to be uh, act, active for only one user, I know I have one person in my medical facility that has access to patient records because that's their job. That's what they do. And we can house this solution uh, in an on-prem environment and uh, dramatically reduce those costs. It's a really good question. Uh, feel free to ask, ask others. I'll, just, I'll demonstrate and we can go through the questions here. Okay, great. Um, next question, how does your billing work? Can I charge back to my departments? Yeah, it's a uh, very good question. Uh, we always get into billing um, challenges with customers. In fact, when um, Mike mentioned earlier, we talked about the, you know, what's included in support and what are the costs associated with Ormuco. Ormuco supports everything from this entire solution. And on top of that, they provide you a billing um, UI that I'm showing you here where I can see what a user will uh, use and what we bill and how that is billed. Uh, we can do it in two ways. When we work with, for example, let's think about our, our healthcare uh, use case. Some departments like account, like the accounting and billing department will use those uh, VMs for billing. Uh, we can get that, those, the run rate and the cost and how much time they put into using the compute resource and turn that into a chargeback. And a lot of enterprise companies want to be able to highlight the costs that they have internally so they can justify the needs for uh, further um, further budget to improve uh, project growth or maybe they need to reallocate some uh, compute that's being used by the marketing team and they're not using all of it, they can move those VMs from one environment to another. So that's how we go about doing that. So we call that chargeback or billback or if you're a uh, service provider, uh, we can call that bill through and you can charge uh, companies that way. It's a good question. Um, what else do we have? Okay, we great. Have a few more. And just a, yeah, and just a reminder to the audience, feel free to submit questions at any time. Uh, next question, how would you compare AWS and Azure? Yeah, we get that question quite a bit, and that's part of the broker conversation. Um, customers that want to be um, you know, connected to AWS or Azure. What we've done is take, the, take this UI, which I'm – showing you right now is making it as simple as possible. In fact, uh, if you go to AWS or Azure, you can see that there's a lot of options. I mean, there's many, many buttons to click on. Um, what we wanted to do in what we're getting really good feedback on with our enterprise customers is just give me an environment where I can simply um, create and choose a Windows server of my choice and, you know, determine how much memory or CPU I need, um, and let me do it, um, you know, at a point where I can make a few clicks, and as I'm showing you here, I'm, I have a Windows machine being created. Um, this actually, the biggest difference is that you think about your user groups that are um, out there. There's a lot of developers. There's a lot of systems administrators. There's uh, quite a few other the, the, the uh, IT teams just want it to be simple. So while this machine is spinning up here, um, 
we wanted to give that same look and feel, but make it more simplified for, for enterprise environments that just want to manage projects. So that's the big difference with Ormuco uh, between a hyperscaler. We need to think about private data. And then obviously, as we answer more of those questions and put them in our cloud, the next question comes up, well, can I move my legacy applications over to this environment. I currently have uh, these VMs and these containers and this amount of storage. Can I bring it to uh, our MUCO backplane and reduce my costs? And you know, the answer to that is, of course, you can. Uh, we typically start with projects that are very high level, and uh, we drill down to just making it very simple to take on these projects with the UI that we provide. So that's a great question. Okay, great. It looks like we have another question here. Uh, what is the yeah. best possible method for moving my physical infrastructure to this cloud service? Well, that's, that's a great question. Uh, we have uh, our SE team that will work with you we typically talk about the requirements that are needed uh, and the tools that we provide uh, for, we call that P to V, physical to virtual migration services. Um, we, start, we typically start small. Uh, we show you how um, we, would, we would do that. And we typically talk about how many VMs do you want to transfer, uh, how, many, uh, how much storage do you currently have, and then we can put together a strategy with you. In fact, um, after this call, whoever you know, asks that question, we'll, we'll talk to them today and walk them through how we do that. In fact, uh, that's just part of our project services that we provide, and we're happy to take those, those projects on. Okay, great. Uh, do you want to keep going with the questions? Yeah, let's wrap up with a few questions here, and then um, obviously we can we can go from there. Keep them going; they're they're great. Okay, okay, great. Uh, next question: How can I overcome cloud latency issues? That's a big problem. Uh, you deal with a lot of um, with the hyperscalers today. You're dealing with the the ping and the power and the pipe and the connectivity that you have. Uh, the, one of the big benefits of Ormuco is that being on prem, you know, we're really isolated in your own network. So, if you've got the bandwidth on on premises or you're working with the right partner, we can isolate that data in an environment where you're going to get the best return on your bandwidth investment. So you're not sharing it with really other users or other companies, or you're really getting into a solution as I'm, I'm demonstrating here. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's relatively quick. Uh, I'm actually logged into uh, London here, and I'm accessing it from um, my Seattle office. And as I'm demoing it over the wire, you can see that the interaction is very quick. Uh, this is the hard work that our development team has put together over the years. We're talking over, oh, millions of lines of code and uh, thousands of man hours here. This is what it takes to uh, build an a enterprise uh, scale platform for private cloud. So good question. This is Mike. I'll jump in on that just a little bit too. Uh, like Jason mentioned, when you're into a cloud environment, it's a shared kind of environment. So there's shared resources up there. Many times uh, you can do things like uh, buy higher levels of VMs with more processing power and things like that. But there's also network latency issues and other things that you have to worry about. And uh, running things on premise, you have a lot more control over uh, your resource issues and your resource utilization. And you can fine tune things uh, a lot better in some ways than you could otherwise. Yeah, that's a good point. So. Uh that's where we get in, involved in uh, just the immediate benefit. So that's exactly correct. I think there's a couple more. Yeah. Next question, how can I use cloud storage with my on-premise applications and services? What's one of my favorite? I love talking about storage. So uh, I'm going to click on object storage here, like I mentioned before. Um, we use Ceph. And that's part of our storage uh, architecture. And simply, as I'm, you're going to have these um, opportunities to look at what your current storage needs are. 
And as I'm sharing that here with you, we can uh, upload storage. We can write APIs to move and migrate storage from whatever your uh, on-prem storage solution is today. Uh, typically, we'll run into a, a NAS or some type of uh, an architecture where you've got your existing storage and you need to maximize that return on your investment. But as you start looking down the road of, oh, I've got more storage needs, this is where our MUCO can come in and say you can set it up on-prem on and use the hardware that you currently have in your servers, in other words, specifically the hard drives that are in your file servers, or MUCO can take advantage of, of using all of the available disk space, and we create a software-defined storage array to use uh, for you to park that data in, which means you don't have to go out and buy a physical box to put the data in in a, in a third-party solution you can use your existing file servers and use all of that unused uh, space, for example, and create uh, storage uh, arrays. Good question. Okay, great. All right. It looks we down like to our one last question our, here. One more? Okay, cool. Yeah. The last question, what are some of the ways that cloud applications are different than legacy on-premise applications? Yeah, I the think about that for a minute. You, you start thinking about legacy applications. They're you know they're running on file servers. They're local. Uh, they've been in play for quite some time, and they and they they do a brilliant job. I mean, they've been there. Uh, the enterprise companies or healthcare or government they use them today. Uh, when you start thinking about moving them to cloud, uh, I look at it from more of a how do we manage this on-prem application and, and put a wrapper around it. And that wrapper is a virtualization wrapper, and that makes that application now uh, a cloud-based app. And when you think about virtualization, there are companies out there that can charge you quite a bit uh, and really we call that a virtualization tax. Um, just for virtualization. So what Ormuco has done is not only provide a wrapper for those applications, for example, it could be this Windows machine over here on the right that I'm looking into. Um, not only are we managing this virtualization machine, we're giving access to any user anywhere uh, where there's an Ormuco footprint or anywhere within your multi-site facility. Uh, we give you um, that ability to now have that as a cloud app supported by Ormuco, um, managed by Ormuco, and giving you a, pardon me with all those wonderful screen pop-ups here. Um, we're going to get back to that. And give you the ability to now have a cloud app, and that's more than just virtualization. Uh, to, to keep in mind that this is a fully supported platform. Uh, your IT department will have less people to manage this. We do a lot of that work for you. And then, of course, you're going to get a better benefit of these applications by reducing the cost to support them. And that's part of the VM tax conversation. So this is a, a complete turnkey solution managed by us, supported by us. Um, work that works with, you know, the UI that we talk about and to kind of wrap things up, those are the five, you know, pillars that we bring to the table here with uh, giving you all those benefits and ease of use and manageability. So I um, appreciate that question. It's a good closing question I'd, I'd like to, um, you know, end on. But, you know, before I go any further, I kind of want to get to our, our last slide here. Um, we really appreciate uh, the time that the audience has put together and, and come uh, to listen to us here. And uh, the questions that we have really involve a deep dive of let's learn more about your projects. And we'd like to invite you to lunch. In fact, for those that that um, have, uh, I can see this slide here. Hopefully, you guys can see it right now. Uh, or maybe I need to stop sharing. Let me do that so you can get a full view of it. And then let's go here. 
Let's make sure you guys can see this slide, and I'll wait for the audience here. Can you see this in a, in a better view? Is it bigger now? Looks good. Cool, thanks. So uh, contact sales at Armuco, and we're happy to uh, buy you lunch. Uh, obviously, we want to pit, we want to be able to discuss your challenges during your lunch hour. That's always a good time to talk about the projects that you have. Uh, we appreciate the, uh, of course, we couldn't buy, you know, everyone lunch, so <laughs> we have to limit it to the first five. So uh, feel free to uh, send an email to sales at Armuco for uh, a chat, and we'd love to talk about what you're currently working on and how we could help you uh, accomplish your projects uh, in a more efficient manner, a uh, more timely manner, and, of course, you know, maybe bring some more, um, actually relieve some of the budget constraints that you have right now, I'm confident that we can do that. So I'm very grateful to, to have the time with, with the group here today and I uh, look forward to hearing from everyone soon uh, for some follow-up act, follow activities. Much appreciated. Okay, great. Looks like we have a few extra minutes here. Um, Mike, did you have any other closing thoughts that you wanted to end with as well? No, I don't know, Jen. I'm I think that uh, that one of the things you have to worry about when you're moving to the cloud is that it can be hard to predict, especially in the world of costs, and that you don't always get the kind of response time that you need to get. And um, these kind of things can make it difficult for enterprises to go have the control of these things in your own enterprise, and you can use uh, software defined definitions to create your networking and to control your computing resources and really give you a, a, a finer grain of control than, than you might have if you're just using a, a vanilla cloud vendor. Okay, great. Well, it looks like we can give everyone a little bit of their day back, um, but feel free to follow up with Jason's, uh, you know, invite to email them for for some free lunch. Um, in the meantime, I would like to thank Ormuco for sponsoring today's event, as well as Mike and Jason for their great presentation. Just a reminder, the seminar will be available on demand starting tomorrow, so please feel free to come back and review. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you for attending. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.